Recently, the Linux kernel maintainers decided to deprecate the 80 character line limit warning that exists within the Linux kernel. Now, it's been raised up to 100 characters, but that's not really the focus of this video. The focus of this video is going to be on an email that Linus Torvalds sent out actually talking about why this has been done. Now, before we get to that, if you're a developer in school right now, you've probably been told countless times, all of your code must conform to 80 characters and you must never do any more than 80 characters. But you've probably never really thought about why this is actually the case. Basically, it's a holdover from back when people used physical terminals. Not the software we see now, which actually emulates a terminal. Physical terminals. Now, a lot of these terminals were built with 80 character displays. So basically that means the display will show 80 characters and it won't show any more. Any more after that, it basically has to line wrap. Now, there were 132 character terminals that did exist back then, but a lot of the terminals people used were 80 characters. So code was written with 80 characters in mind, and then this is kind of just stuck around until 2020. And people are still talking about it as if it's something that is really, really important to conform to. But not everyone agrees that it's actually an important standard to conform to, and one of those people is Linus Torvalds himself. Now, what we're going to be doing today is I'm not going to take the email and just read it word for word. That would be a really boring video. If you want to read the email for yourself, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as the rest of the thread, so feel free to check any of it out and get as much context as you want. Now, what we're going to be doing instead is I'm going to take some excerpts from the email and provide some, I guess, some examples along with the things that he's saying, because not everything that he says in this email really makes sense without seeing what he's talking about and seeing why 80 characters is a serious problem in 2020. The first thing he brings up is the real world issues that are caused by having excessive line breaks because you're limited to only 80 characters. And what he's talking about here is in relation to using tools like grep and awk and sed and other basic Unix utilities like that. Now, the issue here is that when you're trying to grep something out, you're going to assume that it is on one line because grep works line by line. But if something is split across two lines, it's now way harder to actually grep out where that's located. And the same thing is true for things like sed and awk as well. And tons of other basic Unix utilities that rely on regex, even things that rely on doing things by line numbers. If you've got a line that's split across two lines, well now that line actually has two line numbers, which makes it way harder to actually manipulate. Because of this, it's just way harder to actually use these tools. The next point he says is, I don't want to see patches that make the Linux kernel reading experience worse for me and likely the vast majority of people. So he'll talk a bit later about his actual terminal size, but for me, let's actually see how big my terminal actually is. So I think it's something like 210 characters across with my massive font size, and I could make this smaller if I wanted to. So if we just echo out the uh, columns variable, 210 characters. I could make this smaller, let's make it like this. This is still completely usable for me. Let's echo it out again, and that is 270 characters across. Now, I'm not sure how many lines this is, but basically the older terminals were 80 characters wide by 25 lines high. This, I can guarantee, is considerably more than 25 lines. It would have to be minimum 50, maybe 70. So 270 by around 60 or 70. Now, I wouldn't actually use a terminal like this. I like it to be a bit more comfortable, so I have the font a bit bigger than this. But even at this font size, you still have so many columns to work with. I guess if you're using a 4x3 monitor, it will be less. But if you're using a 1080p 4x3 monitor, you will still have way more than 80 columns to work with. And because of this, there's no real reason to actually limit people to only having 80 characters to work with when they want to just read through the Linux kernel. Because what's going to happen is you're going to have excessive line breaks and it just makes it way harder to actually read. Replying to someone who replied earlier in the thread, he says, if you or Christoph have 80 character lines, you get possibly ugly wrapped output. Tough. That's your choice. Your hardware limitation shouldn't be a pain for the rest of us. Now, this isn't to say that he's not going to make considerations for certain people. You obviously don't want to have the Linux kernel take up 10 gigs of RAM. That would be completely insane. But when it comes to making extreme considerations for people on extreme edge cases, there's not really any reason to do that. The year is 2020. Everyone's using widescreen monitors. Everyone has 1080p monitors. 
you don't need 80 character line limits. Moving on to the next point, my monitor is not only a lot wider than it is tall, so most people are on 16x9 monitors, even if you're on a 4x3 monitor, it is still going to be wider than it is tall. Not much wider, but on a 16x9 monitor, it is massively wider. If you're on a 21x9 monitor, it's even wider than that. Moving on from that, my fonts are universally narrower than they are taller, long lines are natural. Now, I'm not sure what font exactly Linus runs, but I use a programming font, and I know that a lot of people do use programming fonts, and these fonts are especially true for this. They are very narrow fonts, but are really tall, because generally it's much easier for people to read a really tall font, and when you're doing programming, you want it to be easy to read, because you don't want to strain yourself trying to read the text. You want to just focus on what you're trying to write, and you want it to be as easy to read as possible. So, this is especially true for a lot of people who are using programming fonts as well, but but as Linus said, it's also just generally true for most fonts. Next he says, when I tie all my terminal windows on my display, I can have six terminals visible at one time, and that's because I have them three wide. Now most people probably don't have six windows open at one time, especially six terminal windows, so you might not know what that actually looks like. So here's what an example of that would be like. Now obviously I'm using a tiling window manager, so it's not the, uh, the best layout because I've sort of had to hack it with floating windows, but this is completely usable for me. I don't record videos like this because no one in the video would be able to read the text on a phone, but if I was just generally working like this, I don't see any reason why I couldn't do that. It's a bit smaller than I like. As I said earlier, I like the font to be a bit bigger, but I could use this. So if we just echo out the number of columns in this, uh, make sure I actually put the dollar sign here, that is 102 characters wide. Once again, this is a ridiculous number of terminals to have. If I was using something like Tmux and then I just had six terminal panes, you'd probably have one or two extra columns, which isn't much, but just keep that in mind. So running it like this, even like this, I still have 102 columns. You could probably make the font a little bit smaller if you wanted to. This is maybe a little too small. So, I don't know, maybe you can't. This is probably the smallest that I would be able to use it with, but maybe Linus has godly eagle vision and can just read it at the smallest possible size. If you're on a 4K monitor, I guess you could probably get away with something like this, but on a 1080p monitor, it's very difficult to read the text at this point. But you could also have more terminal windows side by side as well, because let's assume you're using an ultra-wide monitor, which some people are starting to adopt now because they are getting very, very cheap to purchase. So if you have an ultra-wide monitor, well, there's no reason why you couldn't have 10 terminals in your screen, 5 per row. Once again, completely ridiculous amount of terminals, you don't need that many, but if you really wanted to, that's something that is actually possible on modern hardware, and you're not limited to only seeing 80 columns at a time. The next point he brings up is, have you looked at the output for things like PSAX recently, or for top, or done git, diff, dash, dash, stat, or any other number of things where it turns out that an 80 by 25 terminal is really, really limiting, and is simply no longer relevant to most of us. Let's actually try out that and see what it looks like. So, in here, let's just run top. Now this terminal, if we just echo out columns, it's not exactly 80 characters, it's actually 79 characters, but the point still comes across. So if we just run top, as you'll see, a lot of text to the side here is being cut off. So transmission right here is cut off, alacrity, whatever any of this stuff is, more transmission. As you can see, a lot of the information is actually being cut off. It's not doing word wrapping. All it's doing is just saying, well, you don't need that information, which is really, really annoying. And the same is also true if we were to run PSAX. As you can see, a lot of this stuff here is cut off. So this is cut off here. We've got this up here. All of this is cut off now. Granted, a lot of this stuff is cut off when the terminal is its full size as well. So if we just run that again, some of this is nonsensically long, but the point still stands that on an 80 by 25 terminal, you're losing a lot of information that you otherwise would have had. Now, there are some programs that still do work perfectly fine on an 80 by 25 terminal. For example, things like a terminal file manager. As you can see, they are very sparse applications that don't really have much information being shown on them. Obviously, some things are lost, but most of the stuff on here will just work perfectly fine. 
But if you try out something like SPT though, which is a terminal Spotify client, it is unusable on a terminal this small. And I can give you countless other examples of this as well. So things like Newsboat. As you can see, this is fine, but we're losing information in the bar down here. Let's actually have a look at some articles though. Oh, it's seg faulted. That's interesting. I haven't seen that happen before. <laughs> that was uh, unintentional. Okay, as you can see in here, a lot of the article titles are just being completely lost. So you don't really have an understanding of what's actually happening. Now, if we go back to the full screen size, as you can see, a lot of these article titles are really long. Some of them still do get cut off, but it's far less often that you're losing information when your terminal is this large. Moving on to the next point, I find it completely irrelevant if somebody says their kernel compile time takes 10 hours because they're doing kernel development on a Raspberry Pi with four gigs of RAM. People with restrictive hardware shouldn't make it more inconvenient for people who have better resources. Yes, we'll accommodate things to within reasonable limits. So what he's saying here is that no, an operating system shouldn't use 10 gigs of RAM to just start and no, it shouldn't always be maxing out four cores and no, your web browser shouldn't be eating up all your RAM. But if you're choosing to use some really, really old piece of hardware, well, that's kind of your fault when, I don't know, when your favorite software goes from using 40 megs of RAM to 50 megs of RAM. Maybe that was a big deal because you only have 128 megs, but for the rest of us who have 4, 8, 16, even 32 gigabytes of RAM, it doesn't really matter. And this is true for any part of your hardware. Obviously, there can be a slippery slope there where you're basically using up more hardware requirements, but you're not actually adding anything. But assuming you're not doing that and all you're doing is adding more features in and it uses more system resources relative to those features, well, when it stops working on your ancient hardware, that's kind of a problem that you have to deal with yourself. Most people aren't using systems like that anymore. Next, he talks about why the 80 character limit didn't even make sense back in the 80s, because even back then, they had 132 column terminals. I didn't know about this, but yes, they actually did have 132 column terminals back in the 80s. A lot of people did use 80 column terminals, and that's why the standard existed, just so you wouldn't inconvenience those people. But now that we've hit a point where you can easily have a 210 plus column terminal with completely readable text, sticking with 80 characters doesn't really make any sense anymore. This is in relation to something earlier in the thread, but someone said that if you increase the line limit, basically what you're going to do is have newbie developers doing things like naming an iteration variable iteration instead of i. And what Linus says here is that yes, local iteration variables are still called i because the context just isn't helpful for some anonymous counter. However, I would slightly disagree here. Sometimes a counter can provide some more context. If you're just generically counting stuff, sure, it doesn't matter. But if you're counting, say, I don't know, you're counting sheep, then calling it sheep counter does add a bit more information of what's actually happening there. But if you're just generically counting to some random point, it doesn't really make any sense to call it anything besides i. And I don't think people are going to stop calling their loop variables i just because they have larger line limits. But he does talk about longer variable names in a different context. So he says, but still it's entirely reasonable to have variable names that are 10 to 15 characters and it makes the code more legible. Writing things out instead of using abbreviations, etc. Now I'm gonna show you a very good example and I love this example because it really annoys the people who really love this program. This is the ST code base. If you've done any programming whatsoever, you can probably tell instantly what's wrong with this. So we have a variable, it's called cell. What is cell supposed to be? I have no idea what cell is supposed to be. I don't think it's explained anywhere. And this is the type for a cell. What is the cell type? I don't know. Type makes sense though, but it gets worse from here. Cell.ob, cell.oe, cell.nb, cell.ne. And then we have the uh, X and the Y variables from those different variables. Now, the X and Y, I guess we can assume are coordinates, but without understanding what NB, NE, OB, and OE are, we can't really understand what their coordinates for. And then we also have this one right here, which is int i. So this is just a generic i. What is the int used for? Well, we don't know because it's just a generic int. You should only be using i as a loop counter because anywhere else you can very easily provide far more context by just giving it a name. And if you're not going to comment your code base, well, you kind of have to give that information. 
and it's also bad up here. So we've got old EY, old EX, old SBY. I assume the Y and the X mean like a coordinate, but once again, what is E? What is S? What is SE? We don't really know. And I can go through this entire code base for hours, showing you tons and tons of examples about how this code base is completely awful. But that we can save for a different video. As you can probably get from that short example, just providing some basic names for these variables would make it so much easier to understand what's actually happening. And this is the point that he's getting at here. If you allow people to have longer lines, you can then allow people to actually use proper names for things rather than abbreviations that you have literally no idea what they mean or trying to come up with some like code name for it, which is even worse to do. And he ends off the email by saying, and yes, we do need line breaks at some point, but there really isn't any reason for that point to be 80 columns anymore. And I completely agree with that statement. There's no reason in the year 2020 where everyone has widescreen monitors and you can make the font smaller and it's still completely reasonable to read that you need to have an 80 character limit. Now, as I said earlier, the full email is available for you to read if you think that maybe I misrepresented what he's saying or if you maybe want some more context to what's being said. Feel free to come read this and also read through the massive thread. Now, it looks like there's not many in the thread, but if you click up two levels, you'll see there's actually a lot being said. So feel free to come actually have a look at this for yourself. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Peter, the Road, Tony Don Oculari, and Zilva. If so, a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Peter, the Road, Tony Don Oculari, and Zilva. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links. We can buy the gear I use in this channel or anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also, remember to go check out my podcast. That is Tech of a T, available on Library and YouTube, and the audio version is just available wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, remember to go check out this channel available on Library, BitTube, and also BitChute. So feel free to watch my content wherever you want to watch it. So smash the like. And before I go, remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.